All right, guys, what's going on? Welcome in. So in this one, I wanted to really uh, cover some of the latest news and notes quickly from the Robert Sala press conference that just ended uh, two minutes ago here. So there was a bit of news, and really this is kind of what sparked the video. A, a bit of unfortunate news. I, I got to be honest, it came, it, it came out of left field. I was not expecting to you know, see or hear Robert Sala say this, but apparently kicker Greg Zerlein uh, was injured this week in practice uh, dealing with a groin injury. He's 50-50 for the game. And the, in the meantime, the Jets are working out other kickers. Now, on one hand, you know, just thinking about, like, if I was Greg Zerlein, I would, like, it, it sucks because, you know, you look at Dallas, it's his former team. He had so much success there. Now he's, you know, on his new team with the Jets. And um, I, I got to be honest, he is, to me, he's been the best kicker that the Jets have had in years in years, right? And I know he's just one position here, but I mean, you look at kicker and how much responsibility that position has, you know, with extra points, with field goals, with, uh, you know, even kickoffs, like special teams as a whole is so, so important. You look at championship teams, you look at just good above average teams, right? They typically, typically for the most part have really effective special teams play. I mean, it, 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 you know, I know we're only talking about Zerline here, but uh, just a uh, quickly side tangent, just as far as special teams goes, I, I mean, it, it's more than just like 50 plus yard field goals, right? It's, are you consistent with it week in, week out? Can you get down the field on punt coverage? Uh, field position, right? Field position, I felt like killed us last season, multiple times throughout the year, uh, where I felt like the Jets were, you know, starting their drives out on the 10 yard line, the 15 yard line, where the opposite team, they were starting drives on their own 35 on 40, you know, so it, it, it's a battle of, you know, at the end of the day, the football field is only 100 yards. Um, and you don't need a full 100 to get three, right? So you know, special teams is extremely important. But I digress. The point is the Jets will be bringing in more kickers throughout the week. Um, working them working them out in the event that Zerline cannot play. Now, granted, he is 50-50, so hopefully he is out there, but was not expecting to see that. Uh, the second bit of information here, Brees Hall is going to be on a pitch count. Obviously, Brees made the most of his snaps uh, last week against the Bills, just absolutely dominated. How will those snaps be divvied up, right? Will they want to, you know, want to use Hall in the pass game at all? Potentially. You know, I think right now the Jets have a, a th really a three. I, I know Dalvin Cook and Brees Hall are like the two big names, the two household names. But, you know, Michael Carter, if Michael Carter is your third back, man, on the roster, like you are in a great, great position. So I, I think with having so much talent here, uh, with having so much youth at the position, like we are in a fantastic, fantastic spot moving forward. So whether Brees Hall gets, you know, 11 snaps or, you know, 15 snaps or whatever the case may be. I have so much confidence in Dalvin and Michael Carter to pick up the extra volume and be able to you know, go out there and produce against a good Dallas Cowboy defense. Now, the third thing I want to get into here is the fact that Randall Cobb is going to be the team's emergency third quarterback for this week's game. And it, it, I mean, man, it's interesting, right? As we all know, Aaron Rodgers went down with the injury Monday night. And since then, I mean, it's Friday we haven't made a move at the quarterback position. And ideally, you know, I, I think I posted a video either yesterday or two days ago, kind of really dishing out my plan if I was the Jets general manager. And again, I'm not saying I'm right here or anything like that. This is just my opinion. I want a veteran quarterback in-house as soon as possible. Sala, it's, Sala said it himself. You know, it's not Madden. It's not plug and play. If we were talking about running back, okay. If we were talking about corner, right, or... You know, wide receiver, okay, the onboarding process is going to be a lot more seamless, a lot more smooth, right? But with quarterback, there's so many moving parts. There's so many different variables, uh, understanding this, uh, the system, right? The verbiage, understanding the overall offensive philosophy, trying to create chemistry with not only just the team, but with the coaches as well, trying to understand what the coach, uh, what the coaching staff wants from you, um, you know, as a quarterback, and then trying to go out there and practice and look competent, right? So, so many different things, and the Jets haven't brought anybody in. So we've heard Sala say that it's Zach Wilson's team. I understand that, right? He's been here. He knows Hackett. He knows the system. He knows the team. Uh, I, I don't think. You know, no matter who the Jets were to bring in, I don't see another quarterback starting over Zach Wilson this week or next week. 
um, my thought process is I just want somebody in because I know how long the, uh, again, the onboarding process takes. Let's get him in house as soon as possible, as opposed to the trade deadline, which is week eight. Because then if we're thinking, all right, three weeks from the trade deadline, it's what, week 10, week 11, week 12? That's when we're looking at a potential new acquisition of the quarterback spot is playing. I mean, we're, we're already so far into the season. I, I mean, man, that, that's a lot of time. And by the way, this is not me just assuming that Zach Wilson is going to be playing poorly. This is me saying, okay, well, yeah, I mean, we had a freak situation with Rodgers. Wilson was hurt last year. Wilson was hurt the season before that. We know the luck that the Jets have had. We know the injury history that the Jets have had the, at, at the quarterback position uh, going back years and years and years. I mean, think about it. Geno Smith was hurt. Sam Darnold was hurt. Josh McCown was hurt. Like tons of different quarter. Sanchez uh, was hurt uh, with the labrum. Tons of guys are, have, have been getting hurt here. I don't know if I feel comfortable just rolling with two quarterbacks, Zach Wilson and Tim Boyle from here on out up until the trade deadline. The closest thing uh, I, I've seen to the Jets actually uh, adding a quarterback, the Jets expressed interest in Rams practice squad quarterback Brett Rippon. Obviously, has ties back to Nathaniel Hackett and you know Denver. But the day prior, the Rams elevated him to the 53-man roster because Stetson Bennett, I, I believe, went on IR, or it could have been even the the, uh, the pup list. But either way, that's kind of the the the, uh, the the one report involving like a tangible, realistic situation around the league. Uh, I, I've seen some you know crazy names getting uh, thrown around like Andrew Luck and Ben Roethlisberger and stuff. But Brett Rippon was at, like to me that's a realistic uh, situation for sure. Uh, but now it doesn't really look like that's going to happen. The bottom line is the Jets apparently feel comfortable with Zach Wilson, then Tim Boyle behind him, and then not making a move. Right, Randall Cobb is the third uh, emergency quarterback on the team. We'll see if that changes within the next couple of weeks here. Um, and also, I've seen a lot of talk about Kirk Cousins today. Right, I, I wasn't able to uh, catch the game last night, but did manage to catch the highlights. I felt like Kirk looked good once again, and the Vikings are zero and two and whatnot. So there's a lot of you know different connections that people are making. Well, you know, hey, if the Jets are win now and they need a quarterback, Kirk on a one year deal. And I and I do plan on making a whole separate video about that if you guys want. So anyway, let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section. Zerline is 50-50 for the game. Brees Hall is going to uh, continue to be on a pitch count, looking at around 11 snaps. And then, of course, Randall Cobb, the third emergency quarterback. The Jets are not going to be making a quarterback move. It doesn't look like, you know, any time before Sunday. So let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section. Thanks so much for watching. And as always, go Jets. Thank you.